Hello everyone, this is Bhavik Choksi here and I hope you guys are doing great. Today we would be doing a quick and to the point revision for index 105. Non-current assets held for sale. So this standard has three main coverages. First is non-current assets, second is disposal group and third is discontinued operations. So these items which are held for sale are covered by index 105. So what is a non-current asset? Well, every asset other than a current asset is a non-current asset. That is, if you have a life of more than 12 months or greater than the operating cycle as a case may be, then you are a non-current asset. Like for example, if we have a classroom and we have a few benches which we want to sell. These are non-current assets which are held for the purpose of sale. Why do we need a separate accounting standard? Well, it is because these benches would have by default been classified under index 16 PP which would have assumed that these are benches held for the purpose of use and hence you would not compare the selling price of these benches. You would keep on depreciating these benches. However, as a matter of fact, let us say the nature has changed. You are holding them for the purpose of sale and hence the accounting should be similar to that of inventory if not the same as inventory. And as a result, we will apply a separate accounting standard for these non-current assets which are specifically held for the purpose of sale. So to what will this standard apply non-current assets? Second is something called as disposal groups. Disposal group refers to a group of assets which or liabilities which you intend to sell as a part of a single transaction. So for example, if I have a classroom which comprises of the benches, of let us say the air conditioners, the building, uh, uh, the computers, projector, everything which I want to sell as a part of a single transaction that is called as a disposal group. Remember a disposal group can also include liabilities. Like if I've taken a loan on the classroom and I want to also transfer the loan along with, let us say the classroom, that is also considered to be a part of the disposal group. Then what is a discontinued operation? Well, discontinued operation has three possibilities. It is a component or a segment of an entity which is either disposed of during the year. So that's a past event or it is abandoned during the year, which is also a past event or it is held for sale. So over here, a student typically gets confused between a discontinued operation and disposal group. Remember, both of these have to be checked independently. There may be cases where a particular transaction gets classified both as a disposal group and discontinued operation or even one of the two or none of the two. So you have to look at the legal uh, uh, conditions along with the facts of the case. So for example, over here, let us say you have a group of, you have a single classroom and your company has 10 classrooms, you are planning to sell just one of those classrooms, then it is just a disposal group. That is not a component of entity that you intend to dispose and hence it is not a discontinued operation. On the other hand, if you have 10 classrooms in a coaching business of your company, there are other businesses as well like you have let us say a practice or a restaurant business, you do not want to dispose them, just the coaching business in which case if you intend to sell all the 10 classrooms, then it is a disposal group that is a group of assets as well as a discontinued operation because it is a component which is held for sale. Now this is an example where it is both a discontinued and a disposal group in certain cases for example if you have actually sold the asset if you have sold it it is no longer held for sale so it is not a disposal group held for sale however it can still be a discontinued operation because it has been sold or even abandoned during the year. A discontinued operation includes those items which have been discontinued or abandoned during the year or items which are held for the purpose of sale. It is good if you kind of practice a few cases which are then the material as well as the institute material uh, for a better understanding. Now what is the significance? Why are we showing these items separately? Well if it is a non-current asset or even a disposal group which is held for the purpose of sale then you will have to calculate for the purpose of accounting, you will have to compute the carrying value after applying all indices as on the date of classification as held for sale and compare it with the fair value less cost to sell. Select whichever is lower. Now this is a treatment which is very similar to that of inventory. In case of inventories, we used to measure it at cost or NRV whichever is lower. Now these items like furniture, classrooms are not inventory and hence you never used to compare them because that was they were held for the purpose of use. Now they are held for the purpose of sale and as a result you need to compare the carrying value on the date when they are classified as held for sale with the fair value less cost to sell, select whichever is lower. If the fair value less cost to sell is lower, there will be a write-off which is called as impairment under index 105 which will be recorded in the financial statements. 
sir once it is classified as held for sale is it necessary that it is immediately sold no it might take time and as a result the standard over here requires i'll just jump to the accounting treatment so over here accounting principles you will have to come show these non current assets or disposal group at the lower of the two and then show them as a separate line item so there'll be non current assets all the non current assets then current assets all the current assets and then a separate line item for the non current assets or disposal group held for sale you have to disclose them separately further a very important principle is the depreciation would stop sir but these are items which uh, which might get depreciated well inventory also might get depreciated you don't record depreciation on inventory and by that same logic you will not even record depreciation on items which are held for sale if the value falls their fair value less cost to sell will fall further and then there will be a further write off you will stop depreciation from the point this asset is classified as held for sale so depreciation will stop and these items will be shown as separate line items so this is the significance of accounting for a non current asset or a disposal group which is held for sale however if it is also a discontinued operation then the standard says for a discontinued operation you will have to present the profit which was earned as a separate line item on the face of the income statement so typically when you look at the income statement you have revenue you have expenses uh, you have all of these employee benefit expense depreciation amortization finance cost profit before tax less tax and profit after tax so you show the performance line by line however let us say you have three businesses a b and c and you have discontinued business b it is a discontinued operation then your total revenue will only be revenue from a and c your expenses will be only expenses from a and c but for the period when b was operating during the year the profit that has been earned will be shown as a separate line item on the face of your income statement so if it is a discontinued operation you will show the profit that was earned during the year as a separate line item in the income statement along with its tax effect remember you will not do this for a mere non current asset or a mere disposal group held for sale in these cases you will just compare their carrying values with the fair value as cost to sell and book a write off the profits that was earned from one classroom which was just a disposal group will not be shown separately on your income statement however if your entire coaching business you are discontinuing or you have uh, held for sale then the income from the coaching business will be shown as a separate line item as discontinued operations in your statement of profit and loss account going further when you study index 33 on eps you will also show the earnings per share on discontinued operations separately so this is at the end if you go to see the accounting impact for discontinued operation i'm just going uh, 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 let's say in the order so okay so this is the significance of let us say discontinued operation a disposal group and non current assets now what does the standard cover well the standard largely covers as a heading goes non current assets which means items like inventory as items like debtors financial uh, items like trade receivables will not be covered under this standard because it is for non current assets acha so what about financial assets like investments etc will they be covered well usually not because there are special separate accounting standards for these so for biological assets there is a separate index 41 not covered over here for deferred tax assets separate standard index 12 not covered over here for uh, let us say investment separate standard index 109 not covered over here and hence to what does this standard largely apply will it applies to pp to intangibles to investment property and goodwill these are the core coverages of these standards apart from that within investments if th these are investments in subsidiaries joint ventures or associates which are shown at cost as per index 27 this standard can also apply over there but in all other cases of investments this standard will not apply so this is the coverage now when will you classify a particular standard as uh, or a particular item as held for sale the standard says there are two conditions which have to be satisfied first it has to be held for immediate sale in the present condition two important points immediate sale in the present condition and second sale has to be highly probable not just probable highly probable so the when will it be held for immediate sale in the present condition in the present condition which means if you want to sell a flat which is subjected to renovation or refurbishment till the time renovation or refurbishment is completed it is not available for sale in the present condition so you can't classify it as held for sale till the time renovation is completed secondly let us say you are working on let us say A, a a factory which is working on a current big order you want to sell it without any renovation or refurbishment but after completing the backlog of the order so it is not available for immediate sale remember this depends on the facts of the case so if a person is prepared to sell a flat even without renovation then the asset is available in the present condition if you want to sell the factory along with the backlog then it is available for immediate sale as well it is depend on facts of the case 
Sometimes it might happen that your sale is subjected to let us say regulatory approval. So there is a legal delay or a customary delay like let us say some due diligence etc has to be done or a notice period has to be given. The standard says a legal or a customary delay which, which is also affecting similar assets can be ignored. So even if both, even if let us say you want to put a telecom license up for sale, there is a buyer who is ready who is willing subjected to regulatory approval, we will say that the asset is available for immediate sale even if regulatory approval is not received because it is a legal delay that can be ignored. Secondly, you have to see whether the sale is highly probable. So there is a lot of emphasis on the word highly. When will a sale be highly probable if five conditions are fulfilled? First, the appropriate level of management should be committed to the sale plan like the directors or the senior management team should be committed. Second, you have initiated a process to sale. It is not just that you are just thinking it in your mind. You have initiated a process. You have appointed a broker. You have reached out to potential buyers. So a sale process has been initiated. Third, the price at which you are marketing the product is reasonable as compared to the fair market value. That is when the sale is likely to happen. Fourth, the most important condition, the sale is likely to be completed within 12 months from the date as classification for held for sale. And lastly, the change in the sale plan is considered to be any change in the plan to sell is considered to be unlikely. So you intend to sell it. If all the five conditions are satisfied, that is when the sale is highly probable. If both of these conditions are satisfied, that is when you can classify a non-current asset or a disposal group as held for sale. Okay. A few key points over here. If you decide to abandon an asset, is that classified as held for sale? Remember the standard does not say non-current asset retired from use. It says non-current asset held for sale. So abandonment is not sale. If you intend to abandon an asset, then you do not compare the cost, uh, the carrying value with the fair value as cost to sell because you're not going to sell it. And as a result, you might test it for impairment under index 36. However, there's no reason for you to classify it as held for sale. Maybe if it is a component, it may become a discontinued operation, but definitely it is not a non-current asset or a disposal group which is held for sale. Point number one. Point number two, a very interesting interplay will be between items which are uh, 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 let us say events which have happened in the post balance sheet period. Let us say on 31st March, your assets renovation is ongoing, but in the post balance sheet period, renovation is complete. So can you consider the asset to be held for sale on 31st March? The answer is no. Remember the satisfaction or violation of conditions in the post balance sheet period does not affect the classification as on the balance sheet date. On the balance sheet date, if the renovation is ongoing, it is still not an item held for sale. If the renovation is completed in the post balance sheet period from the date, the renovation gets completed, it can be classified as held for sale. Third, in the consolidated financial statements, if you intend to sell a stake in the subsidiary, then the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary can be classified as, let us say, the group of assets or disposal group held for sale in the SFS. If you had followed index 27 and recorded this investment at cost, even that investment can be shown as a held for sale item. And lastly, in certain rare cases, if the time period of 12 months gets extended, for factors which are beyond the entity's control, like a lockdown is imposed. And let us say the management commit continues to be committed to the sale plan, in which case you will continue the classification of as held for sale, even if the time period has exceeded 12 months. Next, we have discussed about the accounting principles. And what if there is a change in the plan to sell? Usually this is rare, but let's say facts change and there's a change in the plan to sell. If there's a change in the plan to sell, then you cannot classify these non-current assets or disposal groups as held for sale anymore, which means you need to bring it back to, let us say, PPE, for example, if it is a non-current asset, if it was a machinery which you intended to sell, you have classified it as held for sale and now you need to, uh, uh, let us say, take it back. Remember, when you classified it as held for sale, you would have applied all accounting standards and found a carrying value, compared it with the fair value as cost to sell, selected whichever is lower. Now, after this activity has been done, depreciation would have stopped. Let us say 6, 12, 8 months, whatever it have passed and now you don't intend to sell. Which means now this is an asset again which is held for use. And hence, the carrying value, which is your ledger balance, will be compared to the recoverable value. The recoverable value over here, why recoverable value? Why not fair value as cost to sell? Because now the asset may be used. And hence, you need to compare the recoverable value that is the higher of the net selling price or the, fair, uh, or the value in use. This has to be compared with the carrying value had there been no held for sale classification. Had there been no held for sale classification, the asset would still have been depreciated. And hence, you will find the carrying value had there been no held for sale classification compared with the recoverable value and select whichever is lower. 
that is the ledger balance that should come on the date of reclassification back to an asset which is held for use that is PP. So you will compare your ledger balance. Let us say your ledger balance uh, uh, on the date of reclassification uh, on the date of classification is held for sale was 100. You compared with the NRV. Let us say NRV was 90. Your ledger balance is 90. Now what you will do is had there been no held for sale classification your ledger balance would have been 100. You will continue depreciating that 100 and come to the carrying value had there been no held for sale classification compare it with the recoverable value and select whichever is lower. Your ledger balance of 90 will be taken up to the balance which is the lower of the carrying value had there been no held for sale classification or the recoverable value. Okay. In certain cases along with the reversal of uh, uh, reversal of held for sale classification you will also have a potential reversal of impairment. So in that case the steps that you studied in India's 36 for reverse and impairment loss will also be applied. Achha, this is a standard which I recommend you study after you study India's 36. So under India's 36 there is a concept of cash generating unit and there is a concept of impairment on the cash generating unit. The concept over here for impairment of a disposal group is by and large similar. That is first you calculate the carrying value of the entire disposal group including all the assets all the liabilities that are a part of the disposal group compare it in this case with the fair value less cost to sell of the disposal group if let us say the carrying value of the disposal group is uh, so over here carrying value of the disposal group is 100 fair value less cost to sell is let us say 90 there will be an impairment loss of 10 to where will the impairment loss go well this impairment loss will first be allocated to goodwill if any an additional loss will be allocated to all the eligible assets so your disposal group might comprise of pp intangibles financial assets inventories trade receivables loans remember once you determine the impairment loss this impairment loss of 10 has to be allocated only to the eligible assets that is first it will go to goodwill and then to other eligible assets like pp like intangible assets like investment property in the ratio of their carrying value sir why because well to items like inventories or uh, trade receivables or biological assets their respective standards would have applied and these values are already at their values as per their standard so over here you will take the carrying value after including all items why because the fair value as cost to sell is also the corresponding fair value as cost to sell for all of these items that you are transferring but once impairment is determined this impairment will be allocated first to goodwill and then to the other eligible assets to which index 105 applies in the ratio of their carrying values you have to ensure that once you do this allocation the value will not the value uh, uh, of the asset like a pp or uh, let us say uh, an intangible will not fall below its individual fair value less cost to sell so this is something that you have to be careful about and last uh, there is a special case which pertains to non current asset which is taken over as a part of business combination which you will study in index 103 in which case you will take over these non current assets held for sale in the books of the acquirer at fair value less cost to sell. So this is a quick overall revision for index 105. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, please let me know if you need uh, any other uh, uh, standard or any other specific point we will be happy to help you. Thank you very much. Please do like share and subscribe. I'll see you with the next accounting standard. Bye-bye. Take care.